before we get into this documentary, I just want to hit this and hit this hard and quick. You guys need to understand that Kent Hovind is not an elder. He's not a pastor. He's not qualified to be a pastor. He's not qualified to be running a church ministry or whatever he calls his business. In 1 Timothy 3, 2, a bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife. Okay, and the rest of in the rest of Timothy, uh, 1 Timothy three, it goes on to explain what the qualifications are. Kent Hovind is not qualified. Okay, um, I'm going to go through this quick, and then then we'll get into the real details of this documentary and what the and who Kent Hovind really is. In January of this year, she said she's filing for a divorce, which I said I, I wish you wouldn't. I hope you don't. I tried everything to stop it, but in Florida, you simply can't stop it. And so it was, I prayed and fasted and said, Lord, what would you like? In about February, I got an answer to prayer. Call Mary and see if she wants to come video, redo her video series. Joshua Jocelyn, who helped out a lot with the Free Kent Hoven campaign behind the scenes and actually bullhorned the courthouse uh, in an attempt to raise public awareness for Kent Hoven. He spent time with the actual family and saw that there was something very, very wrong. And uh, you guys will later find out in the documentary, in order to protect herself, uh, Joe Hoven did have to file for divorce. And the actual petition that she sent to the court was on March 24th, 2016. But the actual divorce was not finalized until months afterwards. So I called her and traced her down and found her and said, Mary, I know you've like done your videos, but they're dated 10 years old. Would you like to redo them? We have a professional studio and cameras and stuff here in Pensacola at uh, our place there in 29 Cummings. He actually had Mary Toko come in and do the vaccine videos in his actual house when he was married to Joe Hoven. <laughs> you can't make it up. It's not like I'm making that up. That happened. You know, uh, people, people have seen the videos. she left to go back home all of the people that work with me down there said for Hoven this is the next Mrs. Hoven I said I'm gonna try everything I can first to stop this one from getting divorced and bottom line is couldn't stop it so you spent what three days in Pensacola a year ago this time and then left and went back to Michigan and so after yeah. you left anyway I called when did I call you it was probably I'm guessing several days after I got home hmm. I think I think you basically said I don't know really how to do this but I'd like to get to know you, and maybe would you consider um, getting to know me as possibly being um, Mrs. Hoven someday? And I was shocked. I was like, "Wow, I never, I never saw that coming." And when I came down to videotape, it was the first time I saw you. It was all done very professional. We were always with a group of people. We were very careful. I mean, you were careful. I was careful. This is professional. And um, it wasn't just the last day that you said, Mary, will you please call my wife, Joe, and ask her to please stop this divorce. Um, maybe she'll listen to you. I don't know why she's doing it. I don't agree with it. But nonetheless, she wants me to sign papers and I, I'm not all for it. I did and actually spoke to Joe and Eric about two days later. Florida is a no-fault divorce state, and if uh, a spouse says that the marriage is irretrievably broken, then they can get a divorce, okay? So Joe, Joe put in her petition to get a divorce from Kent, and um, Kent says that there's nothing he could do about it. Well, for somebody who's desperate, they're going to do everything that they can do to try to uh, reconcile the marriage. Kent Hovind did have the opportunity to fight the last battle to try to reconcile his marriage, okay? So when he says that he did everything he could, he's he's lying to you. If uh, opportunity for marriage counseling, if answering the spouse 
if answering spouse contests the divorce, meaning if Kent cont could contest the divorce, a Florida judge can order either both sides to participate in marriage counseling. Okay, Kent Hoven could have easily gone to the family law rules and opinions in the Florida courts, downloaded a form called an answer to petition. So basically answering Joe Hoven's petition for a divorce, saying that I agree with the petitioner on these issues. I disagree with the petitioner on these issues. And the court would have asked them, told them you need to get marriage counseling. That could have been Kent Hoven's last resort. Even if Joe wanted a divorce, no matter what, Kent could have pulled this as the last breath, right? The last breath, the last thing to hold the marriage together. And he did not do that. Yes, I've been getting comments here. It's gone. Two days now. So be praying about that. Not over yet. But she sent me these pictures of him and Mary Toko holding hands five, four to five days after the divorce with Joe. So when he says he tried to do everything, here we go. Theodore cannot, uh, he, he, he cannot prove anything he accused me of. Nothing. It is, he's simply making it up. Well, so, he shows a picture of you and I. In holding the, hands in the van. Right, and that was when I came to visit, you were, a lot, you were divorced. It was the first time I came down here. Um, I spent four days with everybody. Um, and we were praying in the car, and I believe the person in the back seat was with us. We were praying as we were taken off. And it I said, hold my hand, let's pray. And exactly. I, I hold a lot of people's hands when I pray. And he claims that that was some kind of adultery <laughs> okay. or something. So anyway. It is July 14th. It would have been my 43rd anniversary. Uh, oh, well, it ain't over yet. God can still work a miracle. Those of you who are criticizing me for marrying Mary because she's divorced for rightful grounds and I'm divorced because I couldn't stop it. I didn't leave anybody. I didn't divorce anybody. She left me. And by the way, she's a wonderful woman and she's an amazing Christian and I want God's best for her. But she doesn't want to live with Ken Hovind. Okay. I don't know what else I could have tried. Lady, you've known her for 14 years. I don't know what else we could have tried. So, okay. I hope God blesses her greatly. I want the best and I'll continue to be her friend if she'll let me. But it's over. It's done. I'm moving on. Okay. Uh, I want, for me, it's, it's even just having a hope, and I just don't have that right now. I don't okay, have we... a hope that's going to be different in our marriage when you get out, because I'm just hearing things that sound all the same, you know. And that it's... Well, Maybe I need to change, or maybe you need to change and accept it. Hey, that's the way he is. That's the way God made him, so I'm going to love him that way. When I first came down to Pensacola, there was a family meeting with a mediator that was trying to get both sides of the family to agree with each other. On March 9th, 2016, the council wrote, when I flew down to Pensacola for a day and the police showed up, I understood that things were worse than they had been portrayed to me. There was a deep mutual disrespect between Kent and Joe that Joe alleges began the first day of the marriage. According to Joe, the marriage operated similarly to the proverb that not only children but women should not be seen or heard. Joe has identified critical junctures in the marriage where she was seen and not heard. Kent disagrees and offers a completely different picture when Joe was submissive. Countless efforts to get Kent to tone down his rants against the government and to stick with his specialty, creation science evangelism. And obviously the events led to him going to prison. These events were a source of humiliation, confusion, and fear to Joe. There is no sin in that. According to Joe, the day before the joint arrest, she and Kent had been to see a marriage counselor and that counseling session did not end well. The Pharisees were. They were so proud of their righteousness. I've never sinned. Look, he sinned, you know. Yeah, like you've never sinned, you know. <laughs> You lying hypocrite. Let's take that smoking flax and come on, come on, come on, get burning again. Come on, let's go. Come on. Is there any spark left in you at all? Jesus is not trying 
to quench you. He's trying to get you going again. How many people have made just a royal mess out of their life? and people criticizing my bride-to-be, which can be a dangerous thing. Don't do that to my face, okay? They talk about wearing dentures. I don't have dentures, and Mary doesn't have dentures, but you might if you criticize her <laughs> to me. <laughs> you may need no, them. No, man. <laughs> you don't have dentures, okay. He made a pit and digged it, and has fallen into the ditch which he made. The mouth of strange women is a deep pit, he that is abhorred of the Lord shall fall therein, to keep thee from the evil woman, from the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. Lust not after her beauty in thine heart, neither let her take thee with her eyelids. For those who do not know me, my name is Theodore. I uh, ran a lot of the Free Kent Hoven campaign in the background. I wanted nobody to know who I was. I just wanted to help uh, get Ken Hoven out of prison. That's what the Lord led me to do. Um, and uh, rebuild CSE. You know, I actually uh, put it all together to where Ken Hoven would just retire and be with his family. And um, and I never, I didn't understand why God had me go through the experience he had me go through until I totally, I, I, I really cried about it and asked God to open up my eyes. And it's, it's for a time like this to show you all what happens, who these people really are. I'm trying to protect the body of Christ. It's not about Kent Hovind. It's not about Ernest Land. It's not about Rudy Davis. It's not about any of these people. It's about protecting the body of Christ from wicked people in uh, Proverbs, Proverbs chapter, chapter 16, 4. The Lord hath made all things for himself, yea, even the wicked for the day of evil. Everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Though hand join in hand, he shall not be unpunished. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. And by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. Now, this documentary, I'm going to lay it all, I'm laying it all on the line there. I'm laying it all on the line of this documentary. Watch it. Ask God to take the haze away from your eyes, open up your ears, and really pay attention. Hitler said, you tell a lie long enough and loud enough and often enough, the people will believe it. He said, people are more likely to believe a big lie than a small one. But if you're dumb enough to give me 50 bucks, I'll take it. You know, everywhere Jesus went, he attracted a crowd of people around him. Some came just to criticize. I got websites devoted to, against me. Somebody needs a spanking. All those freaking Caucasian cowards! All these fucking freaking people! And we are very conservative here. Roger, how much more work do we have to do there? We have five building projects going at the same time. The Bible says the lack of money is the root of all problems. Empty your wallet and do what you can. Peaceful therapy is keep moving you. And I've been moved 23 times. How many people you've gotten to lead to Christ while in, in prison? About 800. Once a year in prison, I read the shack. I read a lot. I read 1,800 books while I was in. While I was in prison, I wrote 37 books. Or use this place, Dinosaur Adventure Land, to be a healing place. Where his children, our job is to obey him. Preach the gospel, okay? We're supposed to be the salt of the earth. Salt preserves. Salt irritates. You ought to be irritating somebody or you're not doing it right.
When's the last time your kids saw you humble yourself? When's the last time your kids heard you say, I'm sorry, I was wrong? When's the last time you told your brother, look, brother, I'm sorry, I was wrong, forgive me? When's the last time? Hey, happy birthday, Eric. Come visit Alabama. Uh, we'd love to have you up there. Happy birthday, son. I remember the day you were born. Delivered him at home. Uh, didn't they talk about all that pain? It, I, I didn't feel none of that. My son, Ken Andrew Hovind's birthday. Happy birthday, son. I remember the day you arrived. Thank you for being such a... And thank you for serving our Lord. Before I get into how Kent, a uh, character, assassinated me and my wife, I just want to show you guys that he did the same thing to his son. He did the same thing to his family uh, so that he could be looked at as a, uh, a martyr for the faith uh, in a very sick way. What are you saying? You're apologizing correctly? Yeah, I am sorry. I, had I known, I would not have said anything. Or I would have told him, look, I want you to pray for us, but this is not for public consumption. This is going to give Satan things to glory in. You know, when you say on the phone, no, my wife and son need to be exposed. And, and I, then you say, true, you're right. right now, you say, look, I'm sorry. I go, you okay. know what? You gotta, I did say that to the guy. I did not know he was recording. I did not know he was going to post anything. I'm not <clears> telling him to go do that. I do think what they, what happened in this situation is wrong. It might be legal, like homosexuality is legal in some states, but it's still not morally right. Right, but as far as like what you said, you feel like what you said, you shouldn't have said it. You... No, I said what I said. I said is completely accurate. But, but I you feel not... like you shouldn't have said it to well, him. Well, I, I would never would have said it had I known he's going to post it. Well, wait, 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 wait. I saw the video from Rudy Davis uh, that he put out yesterday and about the divorce and the eviction, and I just wanted to know if you were okay. Oh, I'm doing fine, yeah. I'm just, I'm hurt, of course, deeply. But right. she really left me eight years ago, you know. Yeah. After I'd been in prison about a year, Eric started a new ministry, God Quest. Yeah. And then he, as, he, as manager of CSC, for me, claims he sold everything to himself as president of GodQuest for $6,300. It seems like, I mean, obviously you're okay with people talking about it, but I'm not, I'm not going to do that. Um, it's not, I, I kind of, it's not my place, but I want you to know, well, I want you to know that. No, hang, on, hang on, there's one more thought there. All through the Bible, you read the phrase, they feared the people. I bet it's in there 20 or 30 times. I've never checked, but. People modified their behavior, mm -hmm. i.e. they did something or did not do something, because they feared the people. Ah. I think both both my wife and my son need to get the public pressure. You know, when you say on the phone, no, my wife and son need to be exposed, and right. then you say, true, you're right now, you say, look, I'm sorry. I go, you okay. know what? You gotta... I did say that to the guy. I did not know he was recording. I did not know he was going to post anything. I'm not <clears> telling him to go do that. But, but I you feel not. like you shouldn't have said it to well, him. I, I never would have said it had I known he was going to post it. Well, was, wait, 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 wait. It's difficult to trust what he says. When he says, I didn't want that out there. Yet in what he said, he said, I want this out there. So it was okay for him to tell somebody and that other person put it out there but not for him to put it out there. And last night the YouTube video was posted. I'm getting a bunch of phone calls. Yep, it is true. On both counts, go to Lone Star 1776 uh, YouTube video, and that's correct. I have nothing to say about it. I wish I had an answer. <laughs> it blows my mind. The poem comes to mind. Oh, what tangled webs we weave. I called Ken Hovind tonight. I picked up the phone and I called him. But I asked him, I said, is it true that your wife has filed for divorce? And is it true that um, Eric Hovind is looking to kick you out? And he said yes. All right, so today I just learned that Kent Hovind is getting divorced. He has been betrayed by his entire family. His son, Eric Hovind, has stolen everything from him. Everything from him. He came out of jail after nine years to nothing. The federal government threw Kent Hovind in prison for 10 years for some bogus structuring law. But while he's in prison, his son Eric took the whole ministry from him. Nine years as an innocent man in prison, gets divorced when he gets out, and his son evicts him and charges him rent. I mean, 
it's I'm laughing, but it ain't funny. I mean, it's just you gotta you gotta have a sense of humor through all this because I think things are about to get a whole lot worse. I haven't talked to Theodore since Ken Hovind got out of prison. <laughs> I haven't talked to Theodore since Ken Hovind got out of prison. stuff I told him what he did with Eric and them was wrong I told Aaron as well to go after Kent's family that you barely even know I'm just so fed up with it I'm starting to see just the abusers and the manipulators and how they act and I'm so glad God showed me that layer of evil because I don't want anything to do with it okay why am I making this video okay I'm, I'm getting to the point like I'm trying to put myself in Eric's mind I'm like trying what in the world is going on with Eric Hovind? I've never talked to him. I've never had a need to. Hi everyone, this is Aaron. When he first got out, it was a major ordeal to get back what was his. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. I believe that Kent Hoven takes this commandment very seriously, okay? And he does not want his son's days to be shorter. Honor thy father and mother, that thy days may be long upon the earth. Oh, well, what happens then if you don't honor your father and mother? Your days will be cut short. Yeah. Good way to not live a long time is to not honor your father and mother. There's so many examples in scripture. Paul had people apparently riding on his coattails trying to become famous. Um, Smackdown. Alexander the coppersmith did him much. He publicly called out those that were against him. Somebody needs a spanking. I was a manager of the CSC Trust. And I looked at it and I said, these trusts are not going to work. On November 23rd, Eric explained to his dad that uh, while he was in prison that he was going to he was going to start a 501c3. And Kent said, "No, you need to go talk to, to Glenn Stoll, who was a trustee. It was a sham trust, um, so that Kent could evade taxes." Uh, Glenn Stoll of Edmonds, Washington, was barred from promoting a tax fraud scheme using sham trusts. Uh, the court found that Stoll sold a fraudulent corporation soul and ministerial trust scheme. My dad will say Eric sold him from himself to himself. That's very misleading. It makes me sound really bad. Okay, fair point. When in reality, I sold him from Creation Science Evangelism Trust to GodQuest nonprofit. What do you mean? GodQuest might have been a necessary step. Nine months, ten months ago when I got home, giving it to CSE would be the logical conclusion. The options were either to walk away from ministry and have the IRS take it all or move the ministry to a safe place onto a new foundation and under the new 501c3. I chose to move the ministry under the 501c3. See, Kent backed his family into a legal corner. They actually warned him about Glenn Stoll and the sham trust and tax evasion and stuff, but he wouldn't listen to them. We had a team of people that have worked really hard over the, over the past nine years to keep your name alive. The ministry was not about not paying income taxes, so we took that information out of the seminar tapes and stopped carrying resources like straw man. Call me optimistic, but I really thought you would enjoy being home and being grandpa. I thought you would love pushing that, what we had accomplished. This is also on November 23rd, uh, Ernest Land, who is the quote unquote CEO of CSE. It is my belief that Satan has used the fear of what Kent might say or do to create dissension on this property. Therefore, I personally will now step aside to let the family act. I simply serve to support Kent in the development of his new ministry. The day after, on November 24th, uh, Eric's reply to Ernie was, Thank you for trying to work with GodQuest. It really is appreciated. We both know that we have come to an agreement many times only to be foiled by the ever-changing direction of my dad.
Chad only wrote real estate. He doesn't ever wrote books and pocket knives. At that time, but you still got $10 million of liens against you. Doesn't matter if I got $40 billion of liens. They're going to keep coming after more stuff. Probably so. So why would you why would you put out there he stole my stuff and say all this stuff belongs to me? It is reasonable to believe that Kent Hoven does not understand the gravity of his financial situation. Kent admits that the money donated to CSE will more than likely be collected by the IRS in days to come. What does that say about his conscience? What does that say about how he manages God's money? Does he even care about his supporters? Why doesn't he tell people the truth about what their hard-earned money is funding? Brother, you mentioned you're going in, you're studying to go into financing. Uh, do you know the two great financiers in the Bible? One was Noah. He floated his stock while the world was in liquidation. The other was Pharaoh's daughter. She drew a little profit from a rush on the bank. Anyway, I've been out 15 months having a blast trying to rebuild the ministry. Came home to nothing, and here we are starting over again. So you pay all the bills, and I, I run up some big ones, don't I? We're doing a lot of work. Right? <laughs> we, have, we have spent a lot of money on this property. Maybe God's given you a gift of making money, all right? Well, that gift wasn't so you can buy a new Corvette. It was so you can do something for God's kingdom. Here's your chance. Call Ernie, text him, or just mail it if you want to mail something. Everything is made out to CSE. I'm going to pick a number and guess $20,000 to finish everything. It's probably just pure lust of the flesh, but today I stopped at the Kubota dealer. Anyway, this one's $14,000. We had five building projects going at the same time. To support us, click the donate button and send five bucks, and but trust me, we'll spend it on something that'll win souls to the Lord. As soon as we get the money, we're going to start on the next big projects, which is like a whole lot of money. The Bible says the lack of money is the root of all problems. Now, I have a friend who's got a golf cart. He wants a thousand bucks for it. It's 500 bucks just for the rear seat. I've talked to the golf cart dealer. Greed, for lack of a better word, is good. Greed is right. Greed works. Greed clarifies, cuts through, and captures the essence of the evolutionary spirit. Greed in all of its forms. Greed for life, for money, for love, knowledge, has marked the upward surge of mankind and greed, you mark my words, will not only save Teldar paper, but that other malfunctioning corporation called the USA. Thank you very much. What have you done for the Lord this year? You just say, Lord, I got this extra money. I got my Christmas money. I got $300, Lord, what can I do with it? And the Lord says, why don't you give it to that missionary who's struggling? Why don't you do this? Why don't you do this? Why don't you buy some new tires for the bus? Why don't you do this? Do this. Invest it in the Lord's work, and you'll be surprised how the Lord will take care of your needs. Well, I wish we'd get some teenagers to see this. What I've just given you will revolutionize your life if you let it. Learn to seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. People don't want to submit to God's simple plan go to work. Governments don't want to do that. They want you to work and they're going to take part of it. I did not break any laws. I think the government broke many laws in my case and they need to be called to account for that. Well, thank you for joining us. Uh, this is kind of an informal discussion on redeeming the straw man. America's in trouble and what we want to try to do is just explain where we lost it and how to get it back. So that leaves me with four choices to, to take. Number one, I can do what they say. They can tell this person uh, you must file an income tax form. Uh, you must get a social security number. You must get a driver's license. You must get a birth certificate, et cetera, et cetera. A sovereign citizen, but I don't, I'm not a member of a, I don't know, a loose organization of individuals who claim full autonomy from our federal and state government. I don't do that. I think everybody should obey the rules, and I do. And I'm certainly, I don't understand what you mean by sovereign citizen. Uh, it's only God is sovereign. And they keep calling me a tax protester in these documents. Man, that makes me angry. Yeah. They are the tax protesters. They don't like the laws the way they're written. There's probably a lot of things we could do to make life real miserable for IRS uh, agents. It's the sovereign citizen movement. I'm not exactly sure what that is. Uh, they also claim the judicial system has no authority over them as a group or as individuals. I don't think I've ever claimed that. So I can either say, okay, I'll do what you say. <clears throat> I can bring myself from here all the way down and submit myself under these corporations. Or I can try to cut the string between this we the me we the people and the artificial we the people 
Basically, sovereign citizens believe that through a series of loopholes in common law court decisions, selective readings of the Constitution, and obscure tax codes, that they do not have to follow U.S. law. If there's a God, then he tells us what's right and wrong. If there's no God, then the government tells us what's right and wrong. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. I can look for loopholes in the laws and say, this law doesn't require that I do this. The state does not require persons to file a tax form. Everybody should obey the law, including the government. I have not filed any income tax in 28 years. Uh, if there's a law requiring me to file something, I would like to see it. Let's just be really simple here, okay? 26 U.S. Code 1, tax imposed. It's a law. In United States versus Hovind, uh, this is the court ruling on uh, one of Kent Hovind's appeals. And you jump down here to paragraph uh, 12. The government proved that Kent knew the tax laws required the collection and payment of withholding taxes, but he refused to comply. Employees of Evangelism Enterprises, his peers, and legal counsel even testified that Kent disputed the authority of the IRS based on the separation of the church and state, debated the interpretation and application of withholding requirements, and intentionally characterized Evangelism Enterprises as a church and his employees as missionaries to avoid tax obligations. Brian Pop was then asked, was this part of the job that you were doing at CSC that you got paid for? Producing websites, producing, you know, all kinds of media and whatnot for Kent. He says, yes. Now, at any point in time, Mr. Pop, were any taxes withheld from any of the wages or the pay that you received from CSE? He says, no. Here, it shows you just who Kent Hovind is. He's totally lawless. During this period of time, did you become aware of any problems that Mr. Hovind was having with the county? Yes. What problems did you become aware of? At a certain point in time, we stopped getting permits for building new construction. Did you have a discussion with Mr. Hoven as to why he was not getting permits to build buildings? Yes. What did he tell you? That as a church, we are not subject to man's law. I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you said. Man's law. And did other employees come to work there other than you and Carolyn Nelson? Yes. How many people were added over the next couple of years? Just an estimate. 10 to 20 employees were working there at any given time. They weren't missionaries. They weren't volunteers like Kent Hovind lies about. Now really pay attention here. Any unused days will be paid as a bonus in the first week of January. CSE will pay $200 a year into life insurance for any full-time employee. They must present proof of policy to CSE. Now, see, Kent Hovind will not pay employee taxes, but he will pay benefits for employees that work at CSE. Here's even more evidence. Were these individuals come work? Were they paid to your knowledge? As far as I know, most of them were paid. You said that a time clock was installed. Did people punch in and out of the time clock? Yes, they did. Did they take regular lunch breaks? Yes, they did. Did they work regular hours to a large extent? Yes. Here, one of the employees that was at CSC says that there was an actual time card and time clock that was installed, okay? At some point in time, I don't remember when a time clock was introduced. Before then, there were time cards and people could write down their times. And then the time clock was introduced and people would punch in and out. It wasn't until a time clock was installed that they had actual hard, hard evidence to go after Kent Hovind. It showed his true intention at that point that he had employees, not missionaries and volunteers like he likes to proclaim he did. And, uh, I was arrested for structuring, which I'd never heard of, and for not withholding taxes for employees, which we didn't have to do. Uh, no, I believe if you owe a tax, you ought to pay it. There's 48, what, 48 and a half cents per gallon on every gallon of gas you buy and goes for taxes. I pay that every time. I've never been against paying taxes. And I did not go to prison for not paying taxes. I went to prison for structuring. I didn't break any law. I got several questions during the break. I get this all the time. You went to prison? Oh yeah, nine years almost. What for? It's the most bizarre thing. If it hadn't happened to me, I wouldn't believe the story. <laughs> but it happened to me. They arrested me and charged me with structuring. I said, I've never heard of that. What is it? Mr. Beringer, who was the defense attorney for Joe Hoven and de facto defense attorney for Kent Hoven, says, I do two $9,000 checks. Now, it's irrelevant that the bank didn't have to do anything with, with, with respect to that example. I think everybody would agree. The bank didn't have to do anything with that. It didn't trigger the bank's reporting requirements. 
Why? Is it relevant to intent? Is that your position? Listen to what his defense says. You apply the mental side of it, and then you have an issue of, okay, when they talk about innocent activity versus criminal activity, a little old lady comes in and takes out 9000 this week and realizes that she needs 9000 next week and gets it in cash. Did she structure it or was innocently doing something? Here we have Kent's defense saying, there was no evidence whatsoever that the defendants had knowledge of the reporting requirement. Well, Kent Hovind has said multiple times that he was informed about it and that in order to not trigger the reporting requirement that he needed to withdraw less than $10,000. So already this is a blatant lie. He already knew what he was doing. So <clears throat> the, past, the pastor said, try to keep your withdrawals under 10,000 or they're gonna think you're a drug dealer. Here is a blog entry of a woman named Jen Fishborn. She actually went down to Kent Hovind's trial and took very careful notes as to uh, what happened. And so what Kent claimed is that based upon the advice of Glenn Stoll, who now controls Creation Science Evangelism, he did not take out more than $10,000 cash from the bank at any one time, using the cash to pay his missionaries who preferred cash and to pay for the expenses of the ministry. And Kent, as he was repeatedly saying that he wasn't a tax protester, the judge insisted that the evidence was to the contrary, being especially persuaded by the fact that Kent had given control of his ministry to Glenn Stoll of Remedies at Law. Glenn Stoll of... Uh... Uh, Edmonds, Washington was barred from promoting a tax fraud scheme using sham trusts. Here's a money laundering guide for criminal investigators. Now, Kent Hovind says that this law was meant for drug dealers and drug smugglers, which is true, but it was also meant for people that are laundering money. So what is money laundering? Money laundering is essentially hiding money. Kent Hovind says he was running a church ministry, but the evidence is contrary. Kent Hovind was not running a church ministry. He was running a business, and that business was trying to incite people to rebel rouse, to not pay taxes, and that's why they went after Kent Hovind. I'm like the Viet Cong, man, all right? I'm in and I'm out. I was there the whole time. You don't know it, all right? That's an art of becoming somebody who people can pin their beliefs and their dreams on. In April of 2016, Kent Hovind and Ernie Land were in contact with Glenn Stoll. They're trying to figure out ways to get back into uh, some type of tax shelter and get Paul Hansen back uh, in as CEO and run everything back through their uh, fake trusts. Run everything through Paul Hansen first. He is the CEO. Get his agreement with all ministry activities that you're engaged in. All funds collected need to go into a ministry account and all expenses come out of that account. Perhaps Ernie will agree to help us manage those funds, but not under a state corporation. Kent was agreeable to this. He just wanted me to put it in writing and text it to him as I did. Ernie is also agreeable to this, and uh, I guess Ernie had reservations he wanted to speak about. A righteous man hateth lying, but a wicked man is loathsome and cometh to shame. Thou shalt not raise a false report. Put not thine hand with the wicked to be an unrighteous witness. A faithful witness will not lie, but a false witness will utter lies. My seminar series, number five, it's in the package back there. I cover the dangers of evolution. This theory is not only stupid, it's dangerous. The IRS came and raided our ministry with a SWAT team, and they said, get every DVD number five you can find. Ken Hogan likes to say that when he was raided, they had to take all of DVD number five, which is dangers of evolution. Well, that's not true. Kent Hoven was promoting tax fraud schemes and anti-tax and anti-government propaganda. Mr. Ritchie, Kent Hoven's defense attorney in this trial, asked Rebecca Horton of Pensacola Christian College, do you know in the video that you watched, did it talk about tax avoiding, how to avoid taxes? That's been a long time and I've gotten older since then. Okay, so I don't remember all the details. Okay, could it have been about avoiding taxes though? Oh, the whole thing was that, income tax in my opinion. How to avoid income tax? At some point in time prior to January of 1998, did you attend a videotaping event? Prior to 98, prior to 98. Let me throw out a name and see if this means anything to you. Joe Sweet, and we're gonna look at who Joe Sweet is. Yes, I know Joe Sweet. Joe Sweet is a self-taught guru on avoiding income taxes. He was convicted of conspiring to defraud the IRS and corruptly interfering with the IRS in contempt of court. Joe Sweet made his money by marketing and selling so-called tax to fire books and strategies in the mid 1990s. Now this is where it's gonna sound very familiar. They claimed people who bought their materials could legally avoid paying federal income taxes by putting income and assets in sham trusts sold by their businesses. 
Did Joe Sweet give any talks or lectures at CSE? Yes. What was the subject matter of his talks or lectures? I think it was good news was the title of the speech. What was the subject matter? Taxes. It was all about taxes. This is the DVD that they seized from Kent Hovind. It wasn't his Dangers of Evolution DVD, which is a total lie. Ms. Heldemeyer, the prosecutor at this trial, says that yes, the VHS tape that they did seize, they made actual copies of it. Now let's look at what those copies were. This is prosecutor Michelle Heldemeyer that says, remember the videotape that Rebecca Horton testified about? The videotape alerted Ms. Horton that there was a problem at CSE, which led her to conclude that none of her students should work there. Dan Nelson testified that indeed a tape was being created by CSE. So for whatever reason, for whatever purpose CSE was created, and admittedly, most of the business that occurred there had to do with creation versus evolution. This is something different though, right? This is something that was anti-tax and anti-government that Mr. Hoven produced right there on the premises. What does that tell you? That tells you that his belief, again, is insincere. Whatever belief that he claims to have that caused him to not pay his taxes, to not withhold incoming taxes and FICA taxes from his employees is an insincere belief. It is based on his underlying tax protester attitude, anti-government and anti-tax. Now this next part is about how Kent Hovind and Ernie Land used donation money to pay for Kent Hovind's legal and anti-tax propaganda. This has nothing to do with Brady Byron. This has to do with people knowing where they're putting their donation money to. That this is not going towards spreading the gospel. This is going towards Kent Hovind making more money and promoting his false legal narrative. Year after year after year as I sat in prison, Lord, I don't want this. I don't know why you're doing this, but thy will be done. And maybe the Kent Hovind is innocent website he, they said if 300 people do that, they overturn my case, they'll owe me $30 million. We could build Dinosaur Adventure Land. So go there, do what they say on that website. I don't know if people remember, but Kent Hovind was basically bribing people saying, fill out the forms to get the judge impeached and I will pay you money when my case gets overturned. You know, the dude just tried to bribe me to leave because I called him out on his anti-government campaign to impeach the the judge that sentenced him. Does that sound like a church ministry activity? I don't think so. When I first went down to Pensacola, I convinced Ernie and Kent Hovind that they needed to do Bible studies every day. For many, many years when our kids were growing up, and we want to videotape it and uh, encourage other people to study their Bible. Study their and the Bible studies were actually mandatory. And that is the reason why he's being caught in so many heretical teachings, because he is not a pastor. He doesn't know his Bible. In an email conversation with Deborah, Ernie Land says, Did you ever attend a Bible study? Those of us from the campus were aware of why you had to be asked to leave, and just so you know, deception is a form of a lie. Deborah says, Oh, of course you know. Everyone heard me call out Colt Hoven for using the compound for his anti-government campaign to impeach the judge that sentenced him. This was May 2016. This was probably what broke the camel's back. This is probably what made Joe have to divorce Kent Hoven because of legal reasons. She had to protect herself. This text message just shows you that Kent Hoven and Ernie Land have been producing this Kent Hoven is Innocence series months before it actually went live on the internet. And right here, you have Kent Hovind saying, sorry that I don't know those details about the court transcripts, but Lady Di might remember. Here's her number. Hope that helps. Kent Hovind always brings in other people into his shenanigans. Here's a text message where Ernie Land admits that CSE has been paying Brady. As I told Brady, for our sake, we need to be arm's length. We we sell the Innocence DVD on thumb drive, and we produce it here, we give you 10 bucks. We sell it for 15, we give you 10 of it. Well, like some lady up, some family up in North Alabama, their child was taken a month ago, and Brady went up there to help them. I said, Brady, that's wonderful. He said, no, they're broke, they can't afford to pay anything, so I'm doing it for free. I said, well, really, you're not. I'm oh, paying for it. That's right. Indirectly. You mean, I said, well, I'm paying for your food. I'm paying for your utilities here. So you taking them on for free is costing me. I said, Brady, you should have said, give me 500 bucks and I'll, I'll work on your case. And as soon as I use up that 500, I'll ask for more. 
and it's their problem to raise the 500. Sell your car, sell your shoes, you know, borrow from your neighbors, but... Go work for it. He thinks he's paid out. He thinks that the ministry or somebody has paid me twelve to fifteen thousand dollars over the last fifteen months to do this, and so they paid for me to be able to be free to do the research that I'm capable of doing, whether intentionally or unintentionally. I'm being made to feel as if I owe them permission to let them make USB copies available at fifteen to save the end user $35, so they'll be more inclined to use that $35 for postage. Hey guys, this is Wyatt Nickus. I produced the interview with Pat Hoven when I was in Dinosaur Adventureland uh, back in November 2016. Brady, you're sitting here, the only one in the audience tonight. Uh, your work you did on the case is phenomenal. The, the first letter has gone in. If there's a website, kenthovendisinnocent.com. For Wyatt's people right there. Yeah. And I actually said in the interview, talk to Kent personally about his case so, uh, so I don't get involved in it. Still a way to get that overturned and okay. get paid for damages. Yes. All right. Uh, for you guys, yeah, for you guys, for you guys watching, um, if you guys want to, con don't contact me about uh, Kent, Kent's case. Contact Kent himself. Uh, I'm, uh, right. thank yeah. you, sir. Uh, Dr. My Dr. interest is in, uh, Creation versus evolution, oh, okay. but I'll uh, but I'll let can't advertise this stuff when he since well, he's on it, the guy. Well, it's yeah. it's part of my life now. Yeah. They blocked yeah. me for nine years. Anybody yeah. Google's my name is gonna find it. Mm -hmm. There's a website. Kent Hovind is innocent. Anyways, I called him when I was at the uh, Greyhound bus station on my way home, and he told me he doesn't want me to edit out uh, the video, so I had to put in a disclaimer saying I don't want anything to do with the case. I had nothing to do, absolutely nothing to do, with Kent Hovind wanting to use my channel as an outlet to promote his narrative, his uh, legal narrative. The videos in his Bible studies, all the videos mentioning uh, Kent Hovind and his, the Kent Hovind is Innocent DVDs uh, were deleted. The only reason why I have audio recordings of Kent, Mary, and Ernest Land is because they initiated the recordings of our private meetings. The That's why we gotta record like everything. Make a, the That's the why we gotta record, like make everything. Make record, like record everything. Record everything. You know, I understand that DAL needs to protect themselves. They've got cameras all over the place. You're constantly being recorded while you're there, okay? But we have a right to protect ourselves as well. The state of Alabama is a one-party consent state. And so recordings I have were legally obtained. However, in light of the recent threats received from Ernest Land, I feel it necessary to protect myself and my family. This is not new. They threaten anybody that dares expose them. Therefore, I have decided not to release certain audio recordings I have of Ernest Land's voluntary divulgence of very sensitive information pertaining to the dealings and management of CSE. As I expressed my concern to Ernest Land sometime during the beginning of January 2017 that I was worried about Kent's recent behavior towards myself and to others, Ernest expressed his belief that Kent was still behind Brady Byram and Rudy Davis's recent push of the Kent Hoven as Innocence series via third party, and that Ernest believed Kent was probably funding Rudy somehow. In his own words, Ernest Land admits that there are many things they could do to manipulate Kent to catch him personally in acts that we all know he is doing. Ernest also said that Kent Hovind's legal ramifications are the things he will try to hide, like possibly taking donation money and not turning it into the ministry. Ernest claims he must maintain truthful, plausible deniability in many of the things he sees Mary and Kent involved in. 
In other words, Ernest takes a standoffish approach in his CEO position at CSE, knowing too much could compromise his ability to take a lie detector test and pass, thereby allowing Kent strong influence and control of ministry funds and decision making. These audio clips are the same conversation where Ernie Land divulged all of the sensitive information and it just goes to show you I tried to warn Ernie and said that this is not Christian behavior, what you guys are doing is wrong. Still getting over the shock of, of Kent and everything that happened, you know, felt like I was lied to in many ways. I'll be honest with you, I think he's a, he's not a good person. Um, just how he's treated me and how he's lied to me, I think he just uses people and he manipulates them and he's a psychopath. Kent just burns people. He does it and he, you know, I understand he saves souls to Christ and that's a good thing, but he does just as much harm. And I don't know what God they're following, but it's not the God of the Bible. To, to continue to perpetuate lies and to help people that are lying and abusing people like Kent and manipulating, to think it's okay to keep empowering that individual, is, it's wrong, it's evil. To give you a better idea as to Ernest Land and his philosophy and how he thinks, in an email March 11th, 2016, I am being called a heretic by many of the Patriot believers for my efforts to set up a state tax-exempt corporation for Kent to consult with as a ministry patriarch. I somewhat agree, but know of no way to operate in the corrupt system other than to render to Baal the US dollar which is Baal's. Because the church is controlled by Baal and what they preach because of the state corporation status, and so preachers preach, but have no backbone to take a stand on right and wrong, and their congregations follow a false shepherd. But hey, we can bank and use Baal's money to advance the kingdom work. The Hoven family may be correct in both that Kent and I end up in jail, but I am doing my very best to allow Kent to be a true shepherd, preach and speak Bible truths while acting as his Judas, and hoping when the time for being a turncoat comes, I will be strong enough to refuse. Kent has been a devout believer, preacher, and patriot. He has not been a false shepherd. It has cost him dearly. He has been wronged by the government in a multitude of ways. This situation is also wrongdoing. The family did a wonderful job of saving both the possessions and the ministry. However, fear kept the family from running the ministry as Kent ran it, and it now keeps them from accepting Kent back upon his return home. Joe Hoven fears what Kent will bring back to the family. I, too, have to deal in a corrupt government system for business. And when I want something done right and my attorney says they can't do that, I tell my attorney, I pay you bail's money, so figure out how to legally do the right thing. He that worketh deceit shall not dwell within my house. He that telleth lies shall not tarry in my sight. The words of his mouth are iniquity and deceit. He hath left off to be wise and to do good. His mouth is full of cursing and deceit and fraud. Under his tongue is mischief and vanity. Every single night before I go to bed, I'm going to remember Paul John Hansen, who talks about the wisdom of the plowboy, which is closer to the wisdom of God than these evil satanic bastards who think they know it all and can take away our liberty anytime they want to. The reason you punish a crime is to let, let all the are observing not to re repeat the crime. Yeah. I believe I believe 10 months in, in, in jail is a message like that sufficient to the community. We need you on the outside. We need good guys like you that have a constitution and a character and a backbone to be free and not to be locked up in prison. Everything I have in the whole lifetime on planet Earth went to buy this property. When I went down to Pensacola, one of the first things I did was go speak with Anthony Jaworski. He told me Kent Hoven was a tax cheat and a fraud, and that he did not want to be at 5720 Palafox Street anymore. At the time, I was under the impression Kent Hoven was innocent, and so I convinced Anthony that Kent Hoven was not a bad guy. As time went on, Anthony and I became good friends. So Anthony Jaworski, uh, is under the impression, and he lives under the impression from the victim's perspective, that great crimes have done, been done to him. Did somebody beat him up? Did somebody steal his uh, life savings? Hey, Mr. Jorsky, my advice, you know, just be friendly. And I bet that any of those hovens, you know what? I bet they're friendly, uh, Mr. Jorsky. As CSE grew, we needed a larger place to produce media, film, new material, etc., etc. And so Kent Hoven and Ernest Land took advantage of the relationship I had with Anthony and asked if they could rent his garage. To make a long story short, 
Anthony Jaworski told me he had letters from Paul Hansen threatening him. He said Paul Hansen sent him letters saying he did not own his house on 5720 Palafox and asked for thousands of dollars in rent. The first idea I had that something is going wrong when is I got these letters and they're telling me to get off the property, you don't own it, and the IRS doesn't own it, you're a trespasser. I told Kent Hoven about this and Kent said he knew nothing about that and being naive at the time, I took him at his word. Months later, I have been told that Anthony Jaworski passed away due to health complications. What bothers me is Kent Hoven asked me to move into his home at 5720 Palafox Street. He that oppresseth the poor reproacheth his Maker, but he that honoureth him hath mercy on the poor. He that oppresseth the poor to increase his riches, and he that giveth to the rich shall surely come to want. But ye have despised the poor. Do not rich men oppress you, and draw you before the judgment seats? This documentary would be four or five hours long if I went through every single detail and history of Kent Hovind. I can't do that. So I'm not going to go through every single lie. After I put the first three parts out exposing Kent, people came to me wanting to be interviewed talking about how they know Kent Hovind personally. One was a security expert who stayed at DAL, said that it was a construction zone not safe for children, and that men would urinate off the side of the bunkhouse into the children's play area. Two, a construction worker that said Kent Hovind micromanaged so much people could not do their actual job and that the buildings were shoddy and that if it was done right the first time, the buildings would have been finished a long time ago. There's lousy work going on over there and it's not the people's fault. It's because Kent Hovind pretends to know he knows construction when he knows very little. Third, a person that was actually in prison with Kent Hovind said that he was diesel therapy and moved around all the time because he couldn't follow the rules. People didn't like him. Inmates hated him because all he could do was talk about how he was done wrong and how he's going to sue the government. And that federal prison camp is like a piece of cake. It's a resort. And that Eric Hovind came to visit him frequently. Please pay attention to these facts. Really pay attention. And I hope that God really opens your eyes in this last part of the documentary. Kent Hovind started the public fight. Uh, do you still have, like, some of the, uh, well, I guess Bernie's got the list, the books and stuff that we had half done, the children's books, so we can have all of them hard drive? Oh, I don't know. They're all up on, they, Rhonda, they all have copies of them. No, oh, I don't think Rhonda knows she has copies if she does. No, it's... Yeah, we'll work that out with Steve and Rhonda, make sure we got all that. Okay. Here is an email that I sent Ernest Land on Monday, October 24th, 2016. It shows very clearly, hey brother, click this link. This is the cloud drive where all their intellectual properties at. Check files, etc., etc. You can log into 2 Peter 3 and I gave him the logins. Whenever they asked for logins, I gave it to him. The actual login to the server, I gave it to Ernie and Kent way before I even went to Pensacola. That was like two years ago, a year and a half ago or something like that. This is Rhonda, the secretary, saying, hey, Theo, I'm trying to update some of the materials, the books that, uh, you know, that are PDFs and JPEG. Uh, where are they on the cloud? Rhonda, I no longer have them. Whatever you have on the servers is it. Wish you all well. We were moving and traveling, me and my wife, and we lost the hard drive. We called all the hotels and no one had it. We truly are at a loss. I'm sorry. Now you have job security. Type very slowly. Here's a text from Ernie Land, and obviously it's after January 11th. I can't remember the exact date. Steve is changing from GoDaddy to HostGator. They require us to have the, the customer number and PIN number and login info. Do you still have that information, and can I get that from you? And I said, I don't have anything from CSC anymore. People keep asking me about stuff, but I have nothing. I don't want you, the so-called board directors, or anyone from that organization to contact me about CSC or Kent or Mary. Thank you, and God bless. Kent Hovind set up his public attack against me in January of 2017. In these next clips, you will see Kent use several subliminal messages referring to me as Judas Iscariot. Then one of the 12, called Judas Iscariot, went unto the chief priests. It's surprising, though, when people turn uh, away from <coughs> supporting you, sometimes they can really get violent. He was a thief. 
thieves always look at things and say, wow, I wonder what I can get out of that. And Jesus said, one of you is going to betray me. We're all capable, no matter how good a Christian you are, under intense pressure, people do strange things. See, Jesus knew he was going to be betrayed and he knew who was going to do it. He, he blended right in like a really nice guy. They all thought he was one of them. Isn't it amazing how people can be involved in a church ministry, can be a, a staff member someplace and be a Judas? Jesus had them. I've had a few work for me, haven't I, Lady Dunn? Man, they just smile and you know and sing the songs and then stab you in the back and twist the knife. And like, what, what did I do to you? <laughs> uh, Jesus had the same thing. In the same week, they began starting rumors that I hijacked their website and would not hand over designs and production of CSE books and videos, which is a complete lie. Steve, do we have all the bugs worked out on the donate button? Uh, close? Yes, uh, it'll say when they go to the website. Oh, let me, uh, you wrote that down here for me. They probably can't hear you. It'll, when they go to the website, it will say server is, uh, you, may, you may be vulnerable. It'll give a security one. Security one. We finally, I think, got our website problem fixed. Our website was, what's the proper word? Hijacked. Hijacked, okay. Uh, that We won't say any more about that, but it was hijacked. And a security notice on it. For security years. notice. Anyway, look, we got a real serious problem. We're trying to, the guy won't surrender the passwords. The guy who uh, had the passwords won't surrender it. We don't know what to do. Is the website fixed? It was supposed to be done today. They were working on it like mad transfer. Can, anybody check, can you check that, Mary? See if that's, we had uh, an issue with our website certificate expiring and a uh, website is secure. You can go ahead and go there, but boy, for two and a half weeks now, it's been uh, uh, very few orders and no donations almost. And it's been, <laughs> we're really hurting uh, so be and because of that. After Kent Hoven went on his YouTube channel and used subliminal messaging to suggest I hijacked his server, I started getting calls from people who said that Kent Hoven literally told them personally, that I hijacked the server. Then he went on Facebook two weeks later and tried to shame me publicly and spread even more rumors. Theodore, why are you using my name and reputation to promote your new business without my permission after you left and refused to give Steve the password to our website? You did great damage to us for no reason. I trusted you, brother. Then he goes on to say that I need to make this right, otherwise God will not bless me. And I just simply said, this is a group I can post in, Kent. I have told you for many months to leave me alone. The truth will come out at some point. I don't have anything of yours. I have told you all that several times. Please leave me alone. 2 Peter 3, Dr. Dino, and all the other websites Kent has, they are not hacked, okay? He has total control over them. Oh, here we go. Look, Randall Owens, he's the one that actually registered the website uh, years ago. And here we go. Oh, you know what? They still have access to it. It is still on their own servers, the ones that I set up for them a long time ago. Wow, look at that. Hmm. Okay, let's look up drdino.com. Drdino.com. Ernest Land is the one that registered the domain and looks like he has his own servers. Looks like they're set up and they have GoDaddy. And so it seems to between the website and the phone system, the devil's after me from every side trying to shut us down. And I'm going to say this, Kent Hoven. Shut your mouth. Don't ever say anything about me in your videos again. I know that you tried to tell people that I hacked your website or that I stole stuff from you. Bullcrap. I didn't steal anything from you, dude. I never did anything like that. Don't try to lie. Okay? Leave it alone. Okay? You already came out and made your first chess move. You think you're a chess master? You're not a chess master, dude. You probably won't leave it alone. You'll probably pretend like it's... You know what I mean? You know what? I probably won't leave it alone. You know what I mean? People need to know about who he is. Theodore posted a horrible video about you. Uh Wow, okay, I have no idea why, but Theodore did not call me before making this video or give me a chance to defend myself. The only way he can get famous is to pick on Kent Hovind, and she was really causing trouble. So my wife and I sat and talked with her and said, look, you, you need to leave. Uh, this is a camp. Nobody's a resident here. Nobody's a renter. You're here by our invitation, and we are revoking the invitation. You're spreading bad stuff. Yeah, good morning, gentlemen. This is Deborah Henderson. And they don't like you, or when you start exposing them, Kent will give you money and he'll even buy you a ticket for the airplane or the bus or whatever to get you off that property as quick as you can to keep your mouth shut. You know, the dude just tried to bribe me to leave because I called him out on his anti-government campaign to impeach the 
the judge that sentenced him. Well, first of all, uh, when someone accuses someone else of something, which of course, Deborah and Theodore, they started all this. They accused me on YouTube. Yeah. I, I didn't start this fight at all. Yeah. Uh, but I, I do have a right to defend myself. Uh, Kent Hoven and Mary Toko continue to slander me and my wife after video part three. And thank, for, thank you for the people that called me and said, hey, show mercy. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. You'll, don't do it. Don't ruin him. Why? Ernie, why are you allowing all this stuff to happen? We told you what was going on. I was advised by brothers in Christ to drop the Kent Hoven issue and let God handle it. I said that I would, but I knew that they would not stop coming after me. Mary Toko, for no reason other than to slander me. Said I was possessed by demons and emotionally unstable. Also, like a coward, Kent Hovind was telling people behind my back that me and my wife were not married and were fornicating at DAL, which is an outright lie. There's the sad situation Theodore's in. His wife does a fabulous job in the kitchen, which is where everybody hangs out and talks. Right. She's going to overhear stuff. She's mm -hmm. going to want to vent to him, and now he's going to want to protect his wife. Mm -hmm. So for her to say, would you stop? This yeah. is my ministry. Stop talking about my man of God. Kent Hovind slanders me and my wife's marriage. I guess he and Lene He did showed a the file. certificate right on the screen. Right. He and Lene, he said, we got married on September 3rd, 2016 in Fairhope. Yeah, and, <laughs> so, and they had told us they were married in September. What he does is up to him. They lived together for seven months based on a promise they made someplace to each other. Mm -hmm. But it was not what anybody else would consider a marriage, okay? I, I don't think. Probably uh, not even in a court of law. Oh, Kent Hovind, where's your evidence? Where's your evidence? You know what I mean? I could do the same thing to you. You're such a bad person. He accuses Theo and Leigh of not having any evidence for their marriage. Kent Hoven is in a common law marriage, y'all. And here's our marriage certificate, Kent. I have no, I have no evidence they are married. They claim they are, but you know. I, right. But what really bothered me was that he made fun of me and my wife's legal marriage and insinuated I slept with 20 partners. It's amazing to me how people who've had very uh, shady past, you know, they'll have 20 other sex partners, and Theodore's one we're talking about, he's doing these videos on us. Called us dogs. I've had several complaints about public display of affection. I know, I heard Diane. I, I wanted to, to discuss it. I would say even if the dogs were out in the front yard. I well, yeah, like, oh, Joe Rock Rock Adams, go <laughs> go in the Yeah, go in the bushes and do it. <laughs> right, right, right. right. Uh -huh. Stop! You almost got the cheese Dutch. The what? The cheese Dutch. One day, a kid named Darren Walsh made the biggest mistake of his life. Darren touched the cheese! Darren had the cheese Dutch. It was worse than nuclear cooties. We had our ceremony at Walmart. Exactly what happened, Theodore. Give the details here. You and Lene said vows to each other on and decided on a beach somewhere and said, okay, well, now we're done. They're in a parking lot at Walmart. I don't know. And then called my wife an it. I mean, he and his wife, if it's his wife, gets his wife, gets his wife, got... That's an it. It's an emergency. <laughs> Kent Hovind is not just an adulterer, a false prophet and quote-unquote elder and pastor, but he likes to slander and bully people. And when someone strikes back and calls him a hypocrite, he turns into an effeminate and plays the victim. If you want to throw down in fisticuffs, fine. I've got Jack Johnson and Tom O'Leary waiting for you, right here. Excuse me. Excuse me. What are you doing? Back. Huh? No! <laughs> Ron, are you OK? The man put his back, sir. <laughs> Calm down. Ron. He took him. He took him with his foot. No, wait. Wait, let me say something. Let me say something. 
Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Dinosaur Adventureland is not safe for children. Many other witnesses remember that a child was abducted at DAL. In fact, the secretary was even concerned about it and said that the place needs to have safety protocols before any other children visit DAL. This is not just a one-time event. A child was struck by a rusty nail and had to go to the hospital. A boy was bit by a dog that had not been vaccinated for rabies. And when the mother confronted Kent Hoven and Mary Toko, they did nothing about it, just like the child abduction. My wife, who is a registered nurse, confronted Kent about not having an adequately stocked first aid kit and emergency plans. Due to Kent's apathetic attitude to our concerns, my wife and I purchased medicines, medical bandages, and supplies from our own savings. What's even more bothersome is that Billy, who was once a supporter of Kent Hoven and even came out against Deborah and myself before getting to know who Kent Hoven actually was, was shocked to hear that Kent Hoven wanted him to get in touch with one of his friends who was a convicted child molester. It's not the Kent Hoven. They're presenting a Kent Hoven that I don't know. It accumulated to me and my wife actually going down to Dinosaur Adventureland for the weekend. It was after church on Sunday, and we were coming back from a tractor supply. He tells me about a fella. This fella played strip poker with two little boys, 10 and 11 years old. Well, hello there. It sounds like you're traveling. We are. We're in the motor home. Just got into Tennessee. Hey, the guy's name is... He was very unjustly uh, persecuted, prosecuted. Uh, anyway, he spent time in prison for child molesting and did not yeah. do any such thing. It was a uh, setup. The boys were 10 and 11. He got a job as working at the yeah, Bohemian Grove. That's where they make all their plans for the New World Order. He got a job there and videotaped a bunch of stuff, and they wanted him in prison. If Kent doesn't see nothing wrong with what the guy did, I don't want to know what he's okay with. Uh, that brings up a very big question about whether or not there was a child abduction there. And I'm not trying to stir stuff up. I've said that twice now. This, in all reality, this has been such a flipping roller coaster. It is just unreal. Kent Hoven and Rudy Davis are lying about FreeKentHoven.com being Kent Hoven's ministry. If you want to get one of the very, very limited edition books on uh, in hardback on what on earth is about to happen, you can get a hold of him or Theodore at uh, FreeKentHoven.com. The FreeKentHoven.com website is not mine, was not done by me. It was done about me to help me get out of jail, and I'm out of jail. The guys who did that decided to take it down. We've asked them to put it back up. Theo's starting a new ministry, and he's still helping stuff with CSE, still helping us get a lot of projects done and produce some videos for us, but uh, he's no longer in Lenox, Alabama. I think uh, I think the FreeKentHoven.com, well, I've asked him to put it back up. It hasn't yet, so if you want to help him... Uh, uh, get started in his ministry that'd be a huge what a blessing he has been do you know that if you go to free kent hoven today that it takes you to lies of the devil did you guys know that what kind of man builds his ministry on the foundation of another man's ministry justice justice judgment justice is coming any one of you lily livered bow-legged varmints care to slap leather with me I'm the shut up. Did I hear someone say shut up? Rudy Davis says it was a Kent Hoven ministry. Not true. 
It was a domain and website God led me to purchase and build. I never had control of 2 Peter 3 or any other domains Kent Hovind owns. To this day, because of rumors and slander Kent started in January 2016, people think I hijacked Kent Hovind's websites. This is an outright lie. These people remind me of the contentious woman in Proverbs 25, 24. Kent used me financially by asking me to take over DVD duplications at CSE. CSE is not a church ministry. Evidence seems to indicate it is Kent's alter ego. And after we warned Ernest Land of what we saw going on, he lied about us and slandered us alongside Kent Hoven and Mary Toko. Because I was working 12, 16 hours a day, okay? I had no idea who Ken Hoven was. I talked to Ken. I said, listen, I just talked to Ernie. I can't buy the DVDs. There's no money in the account, man. And he goes, and he freaks out. He literally was freaking out. Kent knows. I, I literally just barely sold my house because, again, this lie that we were going to build this huge ministry together. Anyway, so I took that money and I bought equipment. And I told Kent Hoven, I said, listen, don't screw me, dude. Don't screw me on this DVD deal. I'm going to put a lot of money into this so that we can build this ministry together. Don't screw me. I won't screw you. I won't screw you. But he literally tried to bankrupt me. He tried to bankrupt me and my wife. When I had a feeling Kent Hoven, Mary Toko, and Ernest Land were setting me and my wife up to kick us out, I told them on multiple occasions, go to somebody else for your production needs. You say, Brother Hoven, I've got $10,000, $20,000 worth of equipment. We write you a check. It's now ours. Yeah, it's probably not going to happen. I won't do that. Now, looking at how... Well, one option is we buy it off you, or we, if you decide you want to go, then we buy the same equipment, keep doing it, or sub it out to you. We're obligated to continue production and DVD purchases through you. On indefinitely, or...? Long. Well, when he purchased the equipment, we obligated to, to at least have his return on investment. So I would, okay. I would like to see us continue to, you know, even if it's on a per piece basis, have him mm -hmm. produce mm -hmm. the masters and I then agree. produce the mm -hmm. DVDs if you're willing to do that. The equipment yeah. to produce these DVDs, the thing the machine's running here now, mm -hmm. if mm -hmm. this guy comes next week and says, I want to donate money for the ministry, can we buy it off of you and you go buy it? No, I'm not going to no. sell okay. it. That's, no, okay. I'm not so no. you take so your stuff with you. Yeah. We'll buy, our own. we'll buy our own. The way I look at it is just I'm a vendor, and if you guys want to go do something else with somebody else, you guys can at that point. I, I don't want anything to change, okay? But if it changes, it changes. I can't do anything about that. Your thing. heart is right um, most, of, most of the time. I detect a little bitterness, as I've already said, but I think we can fix that. Now, uh, an immediate solution is separate, start your own business, we'll be your best friend, we'll buy videos off of you from now on if the price is reasonable. I'm not going to promise you. I'm not going to promise you forever buying whatever you produce, but I want you to continue producing my stuff. Thank you, folks. If you want to get our materials, uh, we have a new, we're getting them produced elsewhere now, like right here behind me, and the quality is improved, and they are all working when you plug them in, right? Yes. Okay. I'm going to build my own ministry. I know that you had thoughts not to do that, that you were kind of wanting to be exclusive. But see, like, like as example, PCC is exclusive and you cannot work any place else or they fire you. But they're employees. But they're employees. It's different as a vendor. I don't know how that works. See, like me. see, that's why I'm trying, that's why. If, if I subcontract myself to my daughter Renee, morning, I agree to I work just leave 40 hours a week. Dirty. And then at night I go home and I work my own business. We work 14, 16 hours. So if they work, if they agree, yeah, I'm going to be retained at about 40 hours a week. At night they can do whatever they want. If they want to. Uh, and for those 40 hours a week, I want to know what's being produced well, and that's why, because I'm going to answer to him. God for the money spent exactly. out here. Exactly. That's right. where you have him send you an email list every day of what he's working on. And that's you problem. said we would and maintain the retainer right. until the equipment was paid off, and I think that's a really good idea. Well, I mean, until the equipment's paid off by buying the product. Not yeah. just a monthly retainer. We will promise retainer to buy enough product until right. it's paid off. Yeah. And I think that's very fair. Mine's have already been made up, so... What do you, what do you mean? This is, all, this is all planned. <laughs> the way, the way this is going to be handled. Theo starting a new ministry, and he's still helping stuff with CSE, still helping us get a lot of projects done and producing videos for us, but uh, he's no longer in Lenox, Alabama.
as time went on, I started to realize just how nasty and ugly these people were and wanted to distance myself from them. God opened my eyes to see how everything was one big lie. I don't think he's a good person, man. I think he just uses people and he manipulates them and he's a psychopath. Anyway, I've blocked Kent's number. I've blocked Mary's number. I'll never pick up their emails. I never want to work with them ever again. You was a vendor, therefore we couldn't fire you, but we discontinued doing any business with you. So that's a lie right there. I guess I'm getting a little emotional now, Theo, <laughs> because I considered you a friend and you started out, your work was superior. You've moved from deception to complete lies of the devil. So you chose the right.com site. So you're telling me there's a chance. Yeah! The issue concerning my quality of work had nothing to do with CSE. Mary Toko and Kent Hoven work hand in hand. My work for Mary Toko was supposed to be separate from CSE. I think the reason we had the meeting last night was because we wanted to see if we get my DVD done. Because this and ministry can buy it at wholesale and so on. Brother, and, if, brother. And, and at the time, when we asked him about a week ago, he said, I don't know if I'm going to get it done. I might get it done. It's not sure. And that's when he said, no, 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 drop everything. I want it done today because this is and a real money maker for us. But at the time, you were kind of like, and even, you know, even if I were to give you a bid, would it matter? Yeah, would it we'll matter that two other bids if it's too high, but otherwise, okay, well, then in two days, you can go do something else with somebody else. I've told you that. I even told you that. I said, listen, you need to go with somebody else. Realistically, then. Theo, you have the footage to all my lectures. You have all my you edits. You do too. I have the edits. I don't know anyone around here. You can't. You can't necessarily. Okay, find but a you're company. making me look like the bad guy as no, if I didn't give you a bid. Is. CSE had to refund a lot of poor quality stuff. We had to pay the shipping on it, we had to toss it away on the final productions that you did. If we are going to pay you X amount per month, then you're working on projects that I want on. Meanwhile, I would like Mary's DVDs done. You get my stuff done. Brother, you gave me, I got Mary's stuff literally five a week, uh, five days ago. Well, she was supposed to get it yeah, edited. She stuff. was supposed to get it edited by a family member. I don't know who it was. She was no, going to go No, actually, I wasn't sure who was going to edit it, and I didn't edit it because I'd just been too okay, busy. Okay, well, I've got part three uh, almost finished. I've got part four, part five. I'm going to be up all night. And then I had to explain to her that I was up for 48 hours, and I had to work on two editing systems, and so the menus are slightly different. The discs work, but the menus are different. Here's an email of basically me telling her that the menus are different and everything works fine. We double checked them and all DVDs work. Can you send me a photo of the blank DVDs? She wanted the work for free. She was nitpicking at anything that she possibly could. I just tried to play those two discs on my computer looking for other edit issues and they will not play. And then I have to reiterate to her, did you try them on another player? They may not be auto playing because again, the menus are different. We double checked all the discs, they work fine. And then right underneath that, I say it for the second time, can you take a photo of the back of them and send it to my phone, please? Because I wanted to ensure that there was something written on the back of the disc. Keep in mind, I didn't charge her for any of the editing. I just charged her for what it was to make the discs. And it didn't matter, she was always wanting more. She was never satisfied. This is an example. Also, the new DVD labels for the individual DVDs. Is there a picture of my grandson or some other picture? I would like to make sure that each DVD has a picture on it instead of the other child. I'm actually going to take time and sit down and watch all my DVDs to make sure that they're good before I produce more. I actually did work on her website right here. She says, I would like to sit down with you sometime soon and look at the various pages because my products are not listed on all the pages, only on some of them. It is up on screen here. Let me minimize us so they can see more stuff. In this video, you'll see with Mary and Kent, I actually updated her website all for free. I never charged her for it. I think that I would like to learn how to do this as well, talking about updating the website. I'm able to change my articles and my speaking engagements, but I'm not sure how to change pictures. So on top of everything that they had me doing, she wanted me to teach her how to edit her website. As an independent contractor, I insisted that Mary go elsewhere to have her vaccine videos produced but Kent Hovind pressured me to take her on as a client, even though they knew that I had too much on my plate already. When I tell you to jump, you jump, he would say to me continuously. 
Seeing as how I worked for Kent on retainment and that there was now a conflict of interest, I felt I had no option but to cave to his demands and take on Mary Toko as a client. He treated me like an employee, like all of the other independent contractors working at CSE. Our involvement with Deborah did not instigate CSE to call the authorities. Kent Hoven and his employee, Steve, lied about my wife and I causing a scene with Deborah Henderson. I'm just going to let their own words bury them. Now, Steve, you were there. Um, we had a little problem with one lady who refused to really cause some trouble. They're all volunteers, out, well, most of them volunteers out at the camp. And so we asked her to leave, and I said, Steve, would you and Roger go help her pack? In my opinion, all they did was um, give this lady an audience because when they in interjected themselves in that situation and just caused us to go off the handle, which made us have to call the cops, you know, and then they accused us to be a christ like when they were the one causing and doing all the actions. That's a lie. They already called the cops. They already called the cops. It had nothing to do with us. They already called the cops. It had nothing to do with us causing a scene or anything. They already called the cops. It was a lie. Look at Ken Hoven do this. Because he knows it's a lie. It just caused us to go off the handle, which made us have to call the cops, you know, and then they accused us to be a Bible studies are mandatory. They are not voluntary. Brother, we have to go. To, you told us to go to the morning meetings every day and the Bible studies every day. Yeah, the, mor you, the morning you, you meetings are all about construction. Half hour ago, half hour ago, I said. You wouldn't okay. have to if, if we had this system. And this is what we're trying to clarify: is the chain of command. Whether you call it a ship or a boat or whatever, there has to be some chain of command. And this, you would not be required to come to the morning meetings or the Bible studies because you are simply a subcontractor at that point, right? So the third sign of a cult is authoritarian, that the leader expects complete loyalty and unquestionable obedience. We don't ask anybody to obey us. We request that they attend the Bible study at night. After Lene and I totally cut off contact with these people, this was her last email to me. The first sign of a serious problem was when you and Lene defied him the day we asked Deborah to leave. That is when it was clear that you had no intentions to submitting to his authority, and you did that in front of the whole team. In any business or working arrangement, that is called insubordination and cannot be tolerated. It was then that the board directors felt it was best for you to move off the campus. We got a couple of folks we asked to leave, and you can see why by reading what they said. Yeah, you know, I've been for Logan, so now you have a sense. You can shut the dinner and take this thing straight to us and help them. Neither Therese, you got three years of Feiglinge. My Führer, I can't let that the soldiers who for them are going to be Feiglinge, Verräter and Versager. My Führer, what they say is unbearable. The Generalität is the schnellst of the German Kent Hoven and Mary Toko were going to be painted as Adam and Eve in fig leaves. No matter how much they try and lie, Kent Hoven and Mary Toko were going to paint themselves as Adam and Eve in fig leaves on the front gates of DAL. Because they were embarrassed by this, they tried to lie about the figures not being painted in fig leaves, but in lambskins. Because people at CSE cared about Kent Hoven's testimony, People raise concerns about the graven image. Don is got, I give Don a whole list of things to do on the tractor and build the dam, build the road, put the pipes in. Don's got a whole, he doesn't need to hear about the gate. He don't care about the no. gate. I got stuff to in do. In fact, now he's thinking about the gate going, hmm, let me see here. Don, you got your own list. Steve, this, you got your it, list. It, it doesn't need to be example. a group thing. Huh? It needs to be a one-on-one -on -one yeah. thing. Forget the gate. I don't care if it's got, you know. He's worried about the gate now? For real? No. Oh. No, he didn't he's making an example the, of... The fact that the conflict came out publicly. And furthermore, <laughs> I don't think it's a group discussion over no. anything. Mm -hmm. Even the gates, if there were four people who had an issue, four people come. But but that's why I didn't want, I felt a little bit uncomfortable with you bringing it up in front of the whole group of people. They don't think twice about okay. it. Now all well, of a sudden it's in their mind. Okay, that, well I, I apologize. I did not mean yeah. for that. They asked, for, they asked, can we bring it up in the meeting? Can we all talk about it? And I said, sure. I'll do that, that's fine. So we tried to draw Adam and Eve, had her cut out of steel and weld it on there. I said, make them look like Fred Flintstone with a, uh, you know, knee length. Uh, uh, Just a uh, tunic Like a little top. tunic toga thing. But we'll do, it out of, we'll do it out of fig leaves.
The gates at Dinosaur Adventureland originally had Adam and Eve with neck-to-knee lambskins. Then we thought, no, let's put Kent and Mary on there with neck-to-knee lambskins. Then I sold Justin, the artist, let's just put us with the Dinosaur Adventureland uniform. So it has today, uh, get it right there, okay. Kent and Mary. And the people cried, the graven image hath brought us joy. And they worshipped the golden calf and sacrificed unto it. And they bore him upon their shoulders and rejoiced, saying, This be our God. Kent Hovind believes in Genesis, bestiality was okay. So in chapter 2, when it says God made animals, that was so Adam could name them and select a wife, or in that case, reject them all for a wife. Then he made the garden. Then he made the animals, one more of each animal again, for Adam to name them and select a wife. And up out of the ground came the elephant. He said, the elephant, no, thank you, Lord. Giraffe, no, thank you. Hamster, no, thank you, Lord. One by one, God made one of each, and he named them and rejected them as a wife. And God said, go to sleep, son. I got a surprise for you when you wake up. Rudy Davis, Kent Hoven, and Ernest Land use violent rhetoric and intimidation to try and silence those who oppose them. Like Rudy Davis, who asked people to stop talking and start taking action on taking President Obama to court where, if found guilty of being a foreign agent, should be beheaded on public television. It's a, it's a church full of cowards, full of white, white Caucasian cowards that don't know crap, that won't do anything except talk. We got an illegal alien, a freaking illegal alien. And I want to pray right now that Bill O'Reilly, Rush Limbaugh, Glenn Beck, Sean Hannity, and R Sheriff Richard Mack, if that's all the freaking support he's going to give our pile, I hope they all end up in prison. Just get this damn foreigner out of the freaking office. He don't deserve to be there. He ain't eligible. He ain't a natural born citizen. And he's a queer Muslim fag on top of all that crap. I'm sick of it, and I pray to God that he brings down some justice on these wicked bastards who they're just freaking selling us out and raping us of all of our money. That's all I got to say. You tell them I'm coming, and hell's coming with me, you hear? Hell's coming with me! I do wish that the Lord would kill him, and I do think that he should be publicly beheaded on primetime television. I've never changed my position. You people that got offended at, uh... Kathy Griffin, her holding up that head of uh, Trump, that's free speech. Uh, you know, uh, if you guys can't handle somebody holding up a dummy head with blood, with a fake blood on it, there's something wrong with your sensibilities. Proverbs 16:29: A violent man enticeth his neighbor and leadeth him in the way that is not good. First of all, yelling at a camera is not violent unless you're a poodle snowflake millennial, right? That's not the same as sticking a taser to someone's testicles and until they die. It is obvious that Rudy Davis doesn't know what the word entice means. To entice somebody is to tempt them. And in the Strong's Concordance, the definition is to incite, to allure, to instigate. Just to be thorough here, to instigate is to bring about or to initiate, to incite someone to do something, especially something bad. Kent Hovind uses shock value and violence to intimidate. From Oregon, all of them are unpredictable. Termites or destroyers. I'm not putting up with it. Here, not gonna let the termites come. shoot every termite I can find. Small bomb, poison, them, kill them, no more termites. Alright, dance is over. Everybody go home. Thank you for coming, ladies. Put the fruit trays away. The insects will be out soon. For you to say things about my wife is A, not true, B, cruel, and C, in most other cultures, dangerous, okay? <laughs> no, don't do that. Okay, you said I'm a narcissist. Uh, I, we looked up narcissist, Steve. It was uh, excessive interest in themselves. Uh, I, I don't think that's true. Uh, I thought narcissist meant a person who wants to be in control and run things. Well, I suppose I'm guilty of that. If I'm driving the car, I want to hold the steering wheel. If you want to give me advice, great. You want to reach over and grab the wheel? No, don't do that. I'll break your arm. For somebody who says they have four PhDs, it's hard for someone not to understand what narcissist means. I think Kent Hovind might have been looking for the noun control freak, a person who feels an obsessive need to exercise control over themselves and others and to take command of any situation. 
During his slander campaign to begin rumors about me hijacking his server and stealing his intellectual property, he posted the following Facebook posts about me. Because Ernest Land did not want me to release his legally obtained audio of him admitting that Kent Hoven and Mary Toko are doing things that are not right, he started threatening me on the internet and in text messages. They threaten anybody that dares expose them. After whatever, Billy came out and said that Kent Hovind was trying to get him to have fellowship with a pedophile. Ernest Land tells Deborah, get a life long as you can because hell is your eternity. As I read these messages, keep in mind that this man is supposed to be the quote unquote head of the ministry that Kent Hovind is running. This is Ernest Land talking to Deborah Henderson. I guarantee laying hands on one of God's anointed will not go unpunished. I guess the accumulation of filthy lucre and fooling people like Joel Osteen and the prosperity gospel means that somebody is anointed in Ernie's eyes. And through covetousness, till they with feigned words make merchandise of you. We know how people are skeptical of TV ministers. Hey, there's a guy who just wants my money. That's what I didn't want any of that. But you do want their money. Well, we need people to support us or we can't stay on, but we don't get on there and ask for it. And it's amazing how people can see that you, when you're genuine, uh, they send money. Sincerity, that's the most important thing. If you can fake that, you've got it made. Based on the evidence, it seems as if Kent Hovind is running some type of cult at DAL. Look at a definition of what a cult is. There are three main things that make something in a cult. One of them is exclusivity. That they are the only ones with the truth. Everyone else is wrong. And if you leave the group, your salvation is in danger. And we never, ever imply that. Kent believes that you cannot lose your salvation if you are truly saved. He has violated scores of scriptures and starting with one of the Big Ten, thou shalt not bear false witness. Without his conscience bothering him makes him, makes me doubt his sanity or salvation or both. People who know me well, like Ernie for 28 years, or Lady Di at the camp for 14 years, will tell you that I don't lie. Jesus makes you a Christian. You just ask him and he saves you. It's easy to get saved. God is not willing that any should perish, 2 Peter chapter 3. sign of a cult is they're secretive. Certain teachings are not available to any outsiders, and if they're presented, you know, they have to be set, presented to members, and then the members take a vow of confidentiality, which none of that is true here. Kent is an open book. He tells everyone almost everything nightly about what's going on here, what oh, his yeah. goals are, what we're doing. And I felt like they wanted to have a meeting with me, and they did. They said, hey, we want to talk to you. And so what I found disturbing is that my talking to you has been considered the murmuring that he's been talking about, that the people are murmuring. I don't want to stay at a place where I'm considered a murmurer when I have a conversation with my friends. As far as the old situation, he should simply, when they come to him about a complaint, say, say stop. Stop, I, right, I, now. stop I right now. Stop right now. Let's call no, Brother Hoven. No, stop. I'm not hearing. Go talk. Stop. Let's call no, Brother Hoven no, right no, now. I don't want to hear. This does not concern me. Go talk to I'm, I'm not getting in this. I'm sorry. I like you. I care. But stop. Where I'm is, not going to hear. Find that verse well, about... I'm, I'm, try, I'm trying to, and it's, it's a weird border between trying to be godly and a good brother know, to them and then and then to like okay I don't want to like what you said take on their grudges so um, I'll try to do better with that I will if try they to do knew you aren't going to listen they would, they would stop coming one of the big dangers in any Christian ministry is 
murmuring and complaining. What do you want to say about that? Moses' sister, his older sister, murmured about Moses marrying an Ethiopian woman. Whether he was right or wrong is not the point. The point is, God gave her leprosy for seven days and stopped two million people from moving to them on their journey for seven days because of the murmuring. But, but that's why I didn't want, I felt a little bit uncomfortable with you bringing it up in front of the whole group of people. They don't think twice about okay. it. Now all well, of a sudden it's in their mind. Okay, yeah. well, I apologize. I did not mean yeah. for that. They asked, for, they asked, can we bring it up in the meeting? Can we all talk about it? And the future is okay. no. The third sign of a cult is authoritarian, that the leader expects complete loyalty and unquestionable obedience. We don't ask anybody to obey us. The point is, I said don't. You said God told me to do it. Well, I know you answer to God, but here you answer to me too. If you want to go answer to God, go somewhere else and answer straight to God. But here you got to go through me. Not, oh, this guy's going to come back and haunt me. God assigned me in this place, okay? <laughs> I'm responsible. If that happens again, I, I'm going to get angry. I don't get angry often, okay? But I was very clear in my answer. And Justin, same thing. I just talked to Justin on the phone. I made it very clear. I This will poison things. The poison always spreads. It just does. And it's probably not over yet. Probably going to lose five more good people because of this. In my little ministry that God told me to, there's just been, I think, five times I've had to ask somebody to leave. This is an email by Mary Toko a few days after we told Ernest Land that we wanted nothing to do with them. Kent never implied that you were not doing good work. Kent never talked about letting you go. The first sign of a serious problem was when you and Lene defied him the day we asked Deborah to leave. That is when it was clear that you had no intentions of submitting to his authority and you did that in front of the whole team. In any business or working arrangement, that is called insubordination and cannot be tolerated. It was then that the board directors felt it was best for you to move off campus. Kent and Mary did everything they could to flush us out so that they can get employees at a very cheap labor cost. He wants people that are destitute, that are poor, that have nothing but him and his carrot stick so that he can control everything that happens at the compound. All right, we have our staff meeting here at Dinosaur Adventure Land this morning. Maybe staff is the wrong word. Ernie will say, oh no, not, we're not paying them. So, okay, volunteers, but we thank you all for coming. First Samuel 22, those who came to David to work with him and his ministry out there were either in debt, discontented, or uh, in distress. How many of you qualify under at least one of those categories? Oh, okay. Okay. All three of you. <laughs> <laughs> and from that, David made an army that was incredible. It's a privilege to work here for free. <laughs> it really is. I mean, there's a lot of people worldwide would love to come work here. Uh, we're, we'll pay up what we can, but right now we just everything going into the monastery, everything going into the monastery, everything going into the monastery, monastery, monastery. Everything going into the monastery, ministry. Uh, uh, but, uh, Pinocchio, why didn't you go to school? School? Well, I, um, uh, I was going to school till I met somebody. Two big monsters with big green eyes. And I think the little green monster got in and said, "Hey, Theo, that ought to be you." Well, I. I Kent Hovind lied about how I wanted all of CSC to be signed over to me. Maybe five months ago, you came to me and said, Hey, Brother Hovind, why don't you have the trustees sign everything over to me so that you can just travel and preach and I'll run things around the ministry? Bingo, red flags went up. I contacted the trustees. They said, Whoa, what is this? Sign everything over to Theodore. No. Out of Kent's own mouth, there was no judge, no jury. He went straight to the board directors, lied about me, and they did exactly what he wanted without asking me about the accusations. Here is my resignation letter, 5-27-2016, months before I supposedly asked Kent Hovind to sign everything over to me. Please accept this letter as notice of my resignation from my position as a board director for CSE Ministries. My last day as board director will be May 25th, 2016. I was hoping that Kent, Mary, and Ernest would repent and publicly apologize for everything that they've done. They decided not to do that. 
and so to protect the body of Christ, I had to finish this documentary and put it out to the public. Now, if you want to donate to Kent, you can donate. It's your money. You want to go down to Dinosaur Adventureland, you can. You have freedoms to do that. But what I did, I know God wanted me to do. And now that it's finished, it's finished. I consider Kent Hovind to be no different than Joel Osteen and Benny Hinn. And so in my future documentaries, I may put him in those. You know, if I'm calling out emerging church false prophets. But I just want to say thank you to everybody who supported us during this really rough time. And thank you, God, for leading us. And he's so good. And I, I implore anybody that's out there, if you've been burned by your church, if you've been discouraged, if you've been financially harmed in any way, shape, or form, it doesn't matter. Don't lose your faith in God. Don't. That's the ultimate test right there, or one of them. Keep your faith. I'm telling you, God will see you through it, okay? I'm a testament to that. And I thank God every single day, although I'm not perfect, that he blessed me with my wife and that every single day we have a chance to serve him. If you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ, call me, 520-510-3982. We will talk about what happened in your life. We'll pray together. And you may not want Jesus Christ to save you the day you call me, but I'm open for you to call me whenever you want to so that I can lead you to Christ. It's not me saving you, it's Jesus Christ. And I want to be able to plant that seed. God bless, Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. John 8, 32, ye shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. And I guarantee you, if you know the Lord Jesus Christ, you have the ultimate freedom.